Many years ago, a brave hero set out on a quest to review and rank every monkey movie ever made. Tragically, he was killed by a cruel, merciless horse just as his journey began. But today, I, Simeon Jimmy, will carry on his legacy, utilizing the single most useful tool in monkey movie randomization. The Monkey Box! And now, without further ado, let's randomly select our next monkey film! The Mighty Pecking Man! The Mighty Peking Man, also known as Gorilla King, also known as Utam King of the Orangutans, also known as Goliathon, is a 1977 King Kong knockoff produced in Hong Kong. Now I know the title of this video says Chinese, but evidently Hong Kong wasn't a part of China until 1997. However, the Chinese government has paid me a handsome fee to pretend that Hong Kong was always a part of China, and as a venture capitalist, I can't help but agree with any communist dictatorship that offers me money. It might come as a surprise that Hong Kong felt the need to make their own King Kong movie, since market research has proved that Chinese audiences aren't interested in movies about gorillas. It also might come as a surprise that I, Simeon Jimmy, a self-proclaimed monkey movie expert, have never seen any of the King Kong films other than the Jack Black one. And I don't remember anything about it because I was 10 years old, it was 4 hours long, and I fell asleep in the theater. But it turns out, the King Kong character has appeared in over a dozen movies, including the original 1933 King Kong, followed by the sequel, Son of Kong, that came out literally the same year due to a phenomenon sweeping the nation known as Monkey Fever. Then there was King Kong vs. Godzilla, King Kong Escapes, King Kong vs. the Nazis, King Kong's Apology, King Kong vs. Donkey Kong, King Kong's Day Out, King Kong's Day In, Kong Skull Island, and who could forget King Kong vs. Steve Harvey? Embarrassingly, I even sell a meme t-shirt based on Kong Skull Island even though I never bothered to watch the film. But I should probably catch up since next year there's gonna be a new Godzilla vs. Kong directed by the guy who made the live-action Death Note movie. So you know it's gonna be good. <laughs> But The Mighty Peking Man isn't a King Kong movie. It's a King Kong knockoff, since Chinese people are too lazy to overcome the one-inch barrier of subtitles and need everything remade just for them. And before you call me a hypocrite, I'll have you know I've watched plenty of Chinese films. Some of my favorites include Parasite, Akira, and The Raid Redemption. So please keep your misguided criticisms to yourself. I'll be judging this movie based on the same three criteria as the other Monkey Box reviews. Monkey hijinks, monkey performance, and overall movie quality. Each category is worth up to 10 points for a highest possible score of 30. The current Monkey Box champion is Dunstan Checks In with a high score of 28. Will this Gorilla King reign supreme over Dunstan? Let's find out. I was planning on torrenting this film like I do with everything else I watch, but it turns out the movie is available on Amazon Prime, and I steal that from my family. And for some reason, the poster classifies it as Quentin Tarantino's The Mighty Peking Man, and it's available to purchase on VHS for only $45. Usually, I wouldn't be able to resist an amazing deal like that, but thankfully the film is also available to stream for free. The story of The Mighty Peking Man is almost exactly what you would expect from a King Kong knockoff, but with one major twist. 
The story begins with a group of businessmen researching the myth of a giant gorilla monster that recently attacked a small village in the Himalayan jungle. They decide that capturing the beast and putting it on display would be an amazing business opportunity, and they use their resources to create an expedition team to find and capture the mythical monster. Thankfully, this movie is campy and comedic, so the adventure begins almost immediately without wasting our time. This is most evident with the introduction of our main hero, Johnny. Typically, in movies like this, screenwriters are so dependent on following the hero's journey to a T that we have to waste at least half an hour on the hero rejecting the offer to go on an adventure. But this movie subverts that expectation with Johnny's introduction. He's passed out on a bar, a man walks in and says, Hey Johnny, come on this expedition, you know you want to. And Johnny says, Yeah, I do. And then the expedition begins. As you might expect from a King Kong film, the main theme is man versus nature. On their expedition to capture the Peking Man, the expedition group clashes with some of nature's most deadly elements. We're talking hordes of elephants, hungry tigers, quicksand, and nature's most dangerous creature of all, an attractive white woman. After most of the crew has been killed by the elements, the remaining expedition members decide the journey is too dangerous and they abandon Johnny in the middle of the night. But Johnny is a brave man who lives for adventure, so he continues on without them and runs into the mighty Peking Man literally the next day. Now here's where the main twist comes in, and as far as I know, this is what makes the mighty Peking Man unique compared to other Kong movies. Typically, the group on the deadly, dangerous expedition to find the bloodthirsty ape will include a random hot chick for no reason, just so King Kong can fall in love with her. But in this movie, the random hot chick is a female Tarzan. When she was a child, her family's plane crashed in the jungle and she was the only survivor. But luckily, the Peking Man took care of her and they became a family. Now, unfortunately for the Peking Man, a Washington Monument-sized cock won't fit inside a Caucasian woman no matter what Black.com will try to tell you. And Samantha, the female Tarzan, begins a love affair with Johnny. Now, judging by Samantha's flimsy outfit, I know what you're thinking. How do her tits stay covered throughout the entire runtime of the film? Well, the answer is they don't. For the entirety of the film, Samantha's titties are on full display, literally just hanging out of her animal skin bra for minutes at a time. Not only did they not even try to keep those nipples hidden, but later on in the movie, there are full-on nude scenes where Samantha is changing clothes. So if I'm not mistaken, this movie might beat Titanic in terms of total titty screen time on a PG-13 rating. Anyway, it turns out Samantha is friends with all the vicious animals that brutally gored Johnny's friends. And there are several scenes of Johnny and Samantha playing with tigers and other dangerous creatures. The only animal untamed by Samantha's beauty is a venomous python that bites Samantha on the thigh. Hmm... A snake in the grass who bites a hot chick on the thigh? Where have I heard that one before? Johnny saves Samantha's life by sucking out the venom. And if you watched these clips out of context, you might confuse the scene for a man earning his red wings. If you don't know what that means, definitely don't Google it in a middle school computer lab. So at this point, Johnny and Samantha are intertwined in a full-on love affair. And now we've got a real reverse Max Mon Amour situation on our hands. Because this time, the monkey is being cucked by a man! And just like Max Monamor, the cuck in question is jealous of his lady love's affair, but goes on to help them continue fucking. The Peking Man carries Johnny and Samantha back to civilization, and that's when he's captured and forced into chains. From there, it's the basic King Kong story. 
The businessmen hold Peking Man in a cage and sell tickets to the public so they can laugh at him and throw fruit. But then for some reason, one of the businessmen attempt to rape Samantha in full view of the monster, and through the power of pure cuck rage, the Peking Man bends the bars of his prison and wreaks havoc on the city at large. From there, we get scene after scene of spectacular man in a gorilla costume destroying miniatures action. But we'll get more into that in a moment. And now that we've gotten through the plot summary, we can get down and dirty with our monkey categories. Starting with my favorite, monkey hijinks. Unlike some other monster movies that shall remain nameless, the Mighty Peking Man actually features a healthy dose of The Mighty Peking Man. The entire first five minutes of this 85-minute film showcase Peking Man attacking a small native village whose lack of technology leaves them powerless against the Great Beast. So while Peking Man is completely obliterating their Himalayan huts with unbridled monkey rage, the locals attempt to fight back with rocks and catapults. Peking Man isn't a fan of this, so he fights fire with fire, or in this case, rock with rock, and he chucks a giant boulder at a guy, killing him instantly, which made me laugh really hard. But the monkey hijinks isn't just limited to carnage and mayhem. This monkey breaks the mold by befriending a six-year-old girl and grooming her until she's sexy and fuckable. We've seen a lot of unexpected monkey shenanigans in this series so far, but I can honestly say I never thought grooming a child would ever make that list. Unfortunately, those decades of grooming only lead to his lady love falling for another man. But a giant gorilla getting cucked by a tiny Asian guy subverts expectations I never even knew I had. So in the hijinks department, he definitely earns extra points. The real monkey hijinks begin when Peking Man breaks out of his prison and completely destroys Hong Kong. He's obliterating buildings, he explodes a shell gas station faster than Antifa could ever dream, he explodes hundreds of cars just by punching them. Really, most of the action in this movie involves miniatures exploding after being punched, which would normally get exhausting to watch in a CGI-fueled nightmare. But these are real miniatures burning up in real explosions caused by the fist of a real man in a real gorilla costume. In case you can't tell, I'm definitely a fan of miniatures and other practical effects far more than CGI, but we'll get more into that later. Naturally, since this is a King Kong knockoff movie, Peking Man's final act of monkey hijinks involves climbing the tallest building in the city, exploding helicopters by punching them, and then, sadly, unfortunately, tragically, spoiler alert by the way, the mighty Peking Man is exploded after punching himself, and he falls to his death. Although some of the monkey action might have gotten a bit repetitive, there were enough unique twists and turns, and definitely a lot of laughs. So, in terms of monkey hijinks, I give this one an 8 out of 10 bananas. With the hijinks out of the way, it's time to evaluate the monkey performance. Now, this has been a bit controversial in my comment sections, but personally, I feel as though the best monkey movie needs to feature an authentic monkey actor. And even though I truly love watching somebody in a monkey costume run around doing crazy shit, and trust me, that sort of thing specifically holds a very special place in my heart, I can't deny that I'd prefer seeing a real monkey on screen. It's the reason why Dunstan Checks In holds a score of 28. They put in the time and effort to train a real monkey actor to perform hilarious stunts. Now, would it be reasonable to expect an actual gorilla to perform all the scenes in this movie? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say no. 
Unfortunately, due to the genre of the film and the stunts required, the mighty Peking Man basically had no option but to use a human in a gorilla costume. And I hate that I have to knock it for that, but in my humble opinion, monkey lives matter. And they deserve more representation on the big screen. On the other hand, I'll take a man in a gorilla costume over a CGI monster every single time. You kids born after 9-11 might not know this, but back in olden times, every single thing in a movie wasn't generated by a computer. If they needed an alien or a monster, studios couldn't just underpay 10,000 CGI artists to bring the creature to life. Instead, they had to make cool costumes and stick people inside them. And in my humble opinion, a guy in a gorilla costume doing crazy shit is a million times more entertaining than any computer effect ever made. And I don't know about you, but I watch movies to be entertained, not to see how epic computer graphics can be. Now with all that being said, although the Gorilla King was portrayed by a human, the film did actually feature a few shots of real monkeys. And that's more than I can say about most of the movies in the monkey box. So I'll give some credit where it's due. For the sake of featuring actual monkeys on screen, in terms of monkey performance, I give this one a 3 out of 10 bananas. And that brings us to our third and final criteria. Overall movie quality. The worst thing a movie can be is boring. That's why bad movies like The Room are held in higher regard than boring, forgettable movies like... Uh, well, they were all so forgettable I can't even think of an example. Thankfully, The Mighty Peking Man is not a boring movie. Not by a long shot. It's a brisk 85 minutes and the movie never wastes a single one. If anything, I'd argue the movie is a little too short. And that's only because it has the most abrupt ending I've ever seen. In the final 60 seconds of the film, Samantha is mortally wounded by a helicopter's Gatling gun. Peking Man explodes and falls to his death. Johnny rescues Samantha and looks down at his monkey friend's burning corpse. And then the ending credits appear on screen. There's absolutely no closure, no clue if Samantha survives, no pretentious dialogue about how twas beauty that killed the beast. Nothing. To its credit, the unexpected abruptness of the ending did make me laugh out loud, but from a narrative perspective, I felt like something was missing. I would have really liked to find out if Samantha survived and how she would cope living in a civilization that killed her lifelong friend. But I guess it just wasn't that type of movie. I can see why Quentin Tarantino loved this movie enough to fund a re-release, and I would assume it's one of the movies that he watched as a kid that inspired him to become a filmmaker. The movie is filled to the brim with hilarious violence, carnage, and death. The expedition scenes where all the fodder characters brutally died were especially funny. Like when a group of guys want to evade the attacking tiger and jump straight into quicksand which kills them within seconds. The horde of elephants scene is also full of amazing imagery. And I really like the idea of a guy with a tiny pistol trying to stop 10 rampaging elephants from trampling him. I've already gone on my rant about how practical sets and effects are leagues better than CGI, but I especially appreciate it when miniatures and props are expertly crafted just so they can be destroyed on screen by a guy in a gorilla costume. Now when it comes to crafting art, I'm pretty retarded. So I can't imagine what it's like to spend time and effort on making something look real only to watch it get completely destroyed. The biggest issue I had with the movie, by far, was the sound mixing. And if you've seen any of my YouTube videos, you know that's a pretty big complaint coming from me. I don't know how they fucked this up so bad, but at times the dialogue was so quiet, I could barely hear it with my soundbar turned up to 100. 
And then of course, as soon as there was any music or explosions, it blew my speakers the fuck out and caused what my doctor calls irremediable damage to my eardrums. So if you decide to check this one out for yourself, that might be something you want to prepare for. I'm gonna be honest with you folks. When I pulled the mighty peeking man out of the monkey box, I was initially disappointed because I'd never heard of it before and I assumed it was gonna be trash. But as soon as I started watching it, I was thoroughly entertained from beginning to end. And this isn't just me being a monkey weirdo. My brother and his friend came over as I started watching and they both seemed to enjoy the movie nearly as much as I did. So, would I recommend watching The Mighty Peking Man? Absolutely. It's short, it's simple, it's fun, and if you got a group of friends together to watch it, I highly doubt you'd have a bad time. In terms of overall movie quality, I give The Mighty Peking Man a score of 7 out of 10 bananas, giving it a final combined score of 18 out of 30. Landing it in second place on our ongoing list. Will Dunstan checks in ever be topped? Eh, probably not. But tune in anyway to the next exciting episode of The Monkey Box! Hey everybody, thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Unfortunately, videos like this usually get demonetized or wrongfully removed by false DMCA claims like Episode 1 just was. So, if you like this sort of content and want to support the show, consider pledging to my Patreon like all the beautiful people on screen have already done. Speaking of which, shout out to Mario Jong Un for pledging at the Cringe Lord tier. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see ya again soon.